Hi, everyone. Our group will discuss the New York City Fair prediction. Our group includes Colin, Rachel, Sean, Tyler, and myself, Joyce. First, let's start with the problem description. The main goal of our project is to have the ability to predict a New York City cap fair at a given time and a date of any year. In our prediction, we're considering few variables such as distance traveled and the numbers of passengers. Our data set contains two other predictors listed as the following. The first predictor being the day of the year with a standard year range starting at January 1st being number one until December 31st being number 365. The second predictor is the day of the week, starting on a Sunday as number zero and ending on Saturday as a number six. The third predictor is the time of day, including hours, 24, minutes, 60, and seconds, 60. The fourth predictor is the distance traveled in which we apply change in the longitude and change in the latitude. Finally, the number of passengers. Table 1 shows the breakdown of variable type and what the actual variables are. For our quantitative variable in the interval scale, we have day of the year, time of the day by hours, minutes, and seconds. For the quantitative variable ratio scale, we have distance traveled and number of passengers. For our qualitative data, we have day of the week. And as you can see in figure one, that's a histogram showing the fair price in which we are mostly under uh, $25, except with the exception of a few outliers. If we look at these figures, each figure describes a comparison. Figure number two compares the day of the year versus the fair amount in which there is no defined correlation. Figure three compares the day of the week versus the fair amount. There's very small difference. If you can look closely, you'll see the box plots are extremely shrunk due to the extreme high fair amounts. Figure four compares the hours of the day versus the fair amount. Please keep in mind that our data is based on universal time, which is four hours ahead of Eastern Standard Time. Figure 5 compares the distance traveled versus the fair amount in which we are able to see a coloration or a linear shape to an extent. Figure 6 compares the number of passengers versus the fair amount in which the fare drops as the number of passengers increase. If you look closely, you will also see box plots are still extremely shrunk due to the high fare amounts. And now I'm going to pass it on to Colin. To evaluate our models through cross-validation, we use the validation set approach by splitting our data into two sets, one with about 80% of the data and one with 20% as our train and test data sets, and those are both saved as two separate CSV files for analysis in R. To measure performance, we are looking at the residual sum of squares, R squared, and mean squared error to determine how well our models fit the actual data. To begin, we wanted to build a regression model that would help tell us what our fair amount would be given all of our predictors. So initially we started with each predictor on its own um, and walked through a forward selection to determine the best fit um, of predictors. To begin, we noticed that distance traveled really cut the RSS in half compared to all the other predictors. So this seemed to be the most significant and was the first one that we chose. We saved this as its own model so that we'd be able to model just distance traveled to fair amount. Next, we stepped through all of the other predictors and got the best RSS starting with distance traveled and ending with hour of the day. However, in this case, we do have a lot of predictors, so this model might be a little bit too flexible. To compare to this, we tried a simplified version with really the most significant predictors from the previous model, those being distance traveled, day of the year, passenger count, day of the week, and minute of the day. In this case, the RSS only had a very small change, so this kind of gives us three sets of data uh, to start with in terms of prediction. To add a few more, uh, we wanted to look at some interaction terms. So since we had broken time into three separate variables, we figured let's start by uh, using some interaction between those three. Uh, so we were able to compare minutes of the day times hours of the day times seconds of the day to create one model with interaction. And we created another model using some nonlinear terms. We noticed that the passenger count plot versus fair amount seemed to be parabolic. Uh, so we decided to use a passenger count squared as our nonlinear term. So this would be our fifth model. So all five of these models will be run through our cross-validation 
uh, validation set approach um, a few slides further. And to go along with our regression, we wanted to do a second model, which is a natural cubic spline. We chose this because we noticed that in the plot uh, you see to the right here of distance traveled versus fair amount, there's a clear shift in the trend uh, between uh, about under 1.25 and after 1.25. So we decided to put a knot right at 1.25 to hopefully model this data using two separate functions. To evaluate all these models, uh, we compared them with the factors we mentioned before, the RSS, the R squared, the mean square error for the train and test sets. So for all of the regression models, um, using only distance traveled, all of the predictors through forward selection, our simplified model, our interaction model, and our nonlinear model, they all had very similar RSSs, R squareds, and mean squared errors. Um, you can see interestingly that when we moved from the train set to the test set to predict the test set, uh, we had about a 5% increase in the mean squared error, which is not too bad. For our natural spline model, however, we had a nice, nice change here. We had a nice R squared of almost 0.7, uh, which indicates a fairly good fit to the data. And we saw that the mean square error was very close between the train and test set, meaning that this model seems to fit the data very well and give us a nice prediction of our fair amount. I'm gonna go over a little bit of a discussion here. Since we are working with the regression problem, our objective is prediction. Here we have a sample data point going from the Empire State Building to the Rockefeller Center at around noon UTC on New Year's Day, 2021, with five people. The following are the variables included in this data point, which include ESB 40.74, comma, negative 73.98, RC is 40.75 comma negative 73.97. Distance traveled is 0 0.0173. Day of the year is 1. Day of the week is Friday, which is 5. Hour of the day is 12. Minute of the day is 2. Second of the day is 15. And the passenger count here is 5. Continuing on with discussion regarding the models. After running the first model, just using distance as the only variable, we can see distance is statistically significant because the probability is extremely low. In other words, distance affects taxi fare price. After completing forward selection, we can see which variables are statistically significant and affect cab fare. Variables circled are not statistically significant when using 0.05 as a cutoff probability. Probability must be less than or equal to 0.05 to be significant, meaning we cannot say if these variables affect fare. In this slide, we are um, going to be discussing the simplified model and the interaction model. Again, the circled variables are not statistically significant in the two models, meaning we cannot say whether or not these variables affect fair prices. All other variables with probabilities less than or equal to 0 0.05 affect cab fare given the model. So um, now we're going to be looking at the nonlinear regression and the spline regression. Um, again, the circled variables are not statistically significant in the first model, meaning we cannot say whether or not these variables affect fare prices. All other variables affect cab fare given the model. Um, and then in the spline, as you can see, both are significant and they do affect the cab fare. Continuing our discussion on New York City taxi fare predictions, we went through using taxcalculator.com to predict our sample data point. And after going through and doing that, we estimated that it would be $8.65 for this ride. As you can see in the table to the right, we have all of our models and the fair amount for our sample data point that each model predicted. One thing to note is that our data is from 2009 to 2015, so prices of taxis may have increased since then. Um, in addition to this, there are a lot of outside forces that our models don't take into consideration. So for example, that thing that nobody predicted at all, which is the COVID-19 pandemic, there could possibly be increases of taxi fare based on the fact that there may be drivers less inclined to take passengers. Um, with the COVID-19 pandemic. In conclusion, we came up with 
the fact that we don't get an extremely accurate fair prediction based on the fact that there is a low R-squared value of about 0.6 for all of our models, uh, meaning that the R-squared value isn't closer to 1. So for our data, we didn't get an extremely accurate fair prediction, so we're not very confident that these models would be great at predicting future fair amounts.